Hey friends, what's up? <laughs> Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying uh, Daf Tes, Daf Nine of Masech the Megillah. Friends, um, we're continuing on these Ain Bain kinds of thingies, and we're gonna yeah start talking about like Sefer Torah and stuff like that, and then we talk about different kinds of coin goggles, which of course is uh, an interesting thing, and bamas, bamas. Who can tell me what a bama is? A bama is like a, a private altar. So we can talk about private altars. Friends, can you have a private altar? No. All right, friends, let's go weiter. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, you know, residual cough, but we got all we're doing just fine. Dav Chesim obeys about, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six lines from the bottom. Ein bein svarim the tefillin u mezuzis, ele she svarim the tefillin b'cholashin the tefillin u mezuzis, and the tefillin ele ashuris. Who could tell me what that means? Let's read that again. So there's no difference between Sifrei Torah, okay, and Tefillin and Mezuzis. Like Sifrei Torah on the one hand, and Tefillin and Mezuzis on the other. The difference is that Sifrei Torah <coughs> can be written in any language you would like. You want to write it in English? Write it in English. With Tefillin and Mezuzis in Nechtovus El Ashuris. Whereas Tefillin and mezuzahs have to be written in Lashon HaKodesh. They have to be written in, uh, what do you want me to tell you, Lashon HaKodesh. Uh, go translate that. Uh, I don't know, like, the stuff. I don't know, like, uh, you know, like, you have to write, V'ahavta Yisra Shem Alekecha, for example, in the Tefillin. And the mezuzahs. You can't write that in English. Um, okay. Rav Shimon ben Gamliel Omer says Rav Shimon ben Gamliel af b'svarim lo itiru shi kosvu eli yivanis. Rav Shimon ben Gamliel says, wait a second. Actually, when it comes to Sifrei Torah, you can't <coughs> write it in English. You you can only write it in 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 Lashon Kodesh. The difference is there's one exception, which is Greek. All right, we're gonna see why. It says the Gemara the Torah from Begidin the Tami asal yodaim zev zeshavin. However. Right, so we said that there's a difference between Sifrei Torah and Tfil on the one hand and Tfil and Mezuzis on the other hand with regard to the language that it must or can be written in. However, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, Sefer Torah, for example, is, 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 consists of lots of different pieces of parchment that are sewn together. So with regarding to sewing together the pieces of parchment, Sifrei Torah, Tfil and Mezuzis, Dalach is the same, that you have to use sinews to, to, um, uh, sew them. You can't use any other material. It has to be sinews from the animal. So we had said in the Mishnah that Sifrei Torah can be written in any language you would like. Vira Minhu says the Gemara, wait, not so fast. We have a Brisa that seems to be saying something else. Mikra Sheksavu Targum Vitagum Sheksavu Mikra. If you have a part of the uh, Torah that is supposed to be written in Hebrew, and instead you, read it, you write it in Aramaic, or a part of the Torah that's supposed to be written in Aramaic, and you write it in Hebrew, well, who can give me an example? Who can give me an example of something in the Torah that's written in Aramaic? Yigar Saidusa, right? When, when, when Lovon catches up with Yaakov, when Yaakov is fleeing, so they make this pile of stones, and in Hebrew it's Gal Eid, and in Aramaic it's Yigar Saidusa, and in the Torah itself, it's written Yigar Saidusa. It says the Brisa. So if you have parts of the Torah that are written in Hebrew, so they have to be written in Hebrew, you can't write it in, write it in Aramaic. And there are certain words in the Torah that are actually Aramaic, you cannot write them in their, he- in their Hebrew equivalent. You have to be true to the language. So again, Miko Shekzavu Targum, so something like Hebrew that's written, that you write in, that you translate to Aramaic, the Targum Shekzavu Miko, or something in the Torah that's supposed to be written in Aramaic and you translate it to Hebrew, Uchsav Ivri, or if you write this, the Sefer Torah with like, um, every lettering, a different kind of lettering, um, you know, you like transliterate it into every. So, Enum Mentami is a It's not going to make your, it's not going to contaminate your hands, i.e., you know, it's not considered a Sefer. It's not considered, uh, you know, uh, some, it's not considered kosher, I guess. Achi Yichtevenum Bichsav You have to write it. Uh, with Ashuris lettering. Ashuris lettering is basically the lettering that we know, you know, like the alphabet that we know. Allah Sefer, it's got to be on uh, parchment, video, and with this like black ink. All right. So what do we see? So we see that we have a Brisa. So, well, on the one hand, our Mishnah seems to be saying that a Sefer Torah could be written in any language. 
And yet we have this b'risa that seems to be pretty specific. If you have a Hebrew that's written in Aramaic or vice versa, taka doesn't work. On my Rav lo kasha. So Rav says, meh. Rav says, I'm not so concerned. Kan be gofen shalon, kan be gofen shalon. It depends. If, as long as you write the Sefer Torah with uh, our lettering, Ksav Ashuris essentially, so then, um, there's no, so that, so then you can write it in any language that you want. However, if, um, you are using some other, you know, writing or lettering, like Ashur, uh, like, like, like Ivri or something like that, so then, so then it is not going to work. Amalei Abai, but Abai Taka says to Rav, Bimayu Kimta, one second. So you're saying that the reason in the Brisa that we're saying that um, you have to write it, you know, if you have a part of, of the Sefer Torah that's Hebrew and you write it in Aramaic or vice versa, it doesn't work. You're saying it specifically because you're using a different type of lettering. If we're saying that we're talking about we're using a different kind of lettering, let's say Ksav Ivris or something like that, so then that has nothing to do with the fact that you wrote something that was supposed to be Hebrew and Aramaic, or something that was supposed to be Aramaic and Hebrew, Even, you know, if you're writing, if you're using, you know, different lettering, well, in that case, even something that was supposed to be written in Hebrew that you wrote in Hebrew, or something that's supposed to be written in Aramaic that you wrote in Aramaic, would still be a problematic. Because after all, the Brisa says that you have to write the Sefer Torah on parchment with black ink and with Ashuris lettering, with the alphabet that we know. So therefore, you know, you can't simply solve away this brisa by saying that the reason why it doesn't work is because you're using different lettering, because that's not enough. You know, with different lettering, you know, the 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 the, the problem is not the different lettering alone. It's also that you have to, you know, you know or say say like this, meaning the issue is not that you're writing Hebrew as Aramaic and Aramaic as Hebrew. If you're saying that that with using different lettering, so then even if you wrote the Hebrew as Hebrew or the Aramaic as Aramaic, it would still be a problem because you're using the long the wrong lettering. So it's not enough to answer that price up by just simply saying that you're using different lettering because then that has nothing to do with the mikra uh, shiksavo targum targum shiksavo mikra. That's irrelevant. Because it also says in that Brisa that you have to, you know, as long as you're using the long, wrong lettering, it's not going to work anyways. So rather, we have to figure out a situation where, you know, writing, where, where, where the problem is that you're writing Mikra as Targum and Targum as Mikra, even if you're using the right lettering. So, Ella, Lokasha, <laughs> rather it's no problem. Oh, okay, fine. So you could say, well, our Mishnah that says that you're allowed to write a Sefer Torah in any language, so that is uh, the Rabbi's opinion. Whereas we also saw in the in the Mishnah that we, there's the opinion of Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, who says that no, you can't write a Sefer Torah in whatever language you want. You want you have to write it in in Lush and Kodesh. There's one exception, which is you can use uh, Greek, but as, after you know, other than that, you have to write the Sefer Torah in Lush and Kodesh, and therefore. You could say that the brisa, which says that the parts of the Torah that are supposed to be written in Hebrew, they write in Aramaic, or vice versa, Aramaic, they write in Hebrew. When we say that it doesn't work, so so that's because um, that's because it's from Shem Megumel's opinion, right? That he says they have to write, uh, you know, the Sefer Torah in its proper language. Or the Gemara says, wait. But Shem Gamliel, after all, has an exception to his rule, which is that you're, out, you're allowed to write the Sefer Torah in Greek. Whereas, it sounds like from this Brisa, right, it says the parts of the Torah that need to be written in Hebrew need to be written in Hebrew. The parts of the Torah that need to be written in Aramaic need to be written in Aramaic. And you can't write it in Greek, according to the Brisa. So how could it be Rabbi Shem Gamliel's opinion? Oh, so the Gemara says, wait, okay. So the Mishnah that says that you're allowed to write Sefer Torah in any language. That is talking about uh, Sefer Torah. You can write Sefer Torah in any language. Whereas Kamet Filonum Zuzis, the Brisa, which says that you have to write, um, you know, if you have um, a part of, a part that's supposed to be written in Hebrew and you write it in Aramaic, or a part that's supposed to be written in Aramaic and write it in Hebrew, it doesn't work. That's talking about Tfilin and Mezuzis. Tfilin and Mezuzis, my time, how come? Mishum, Dechsev, Behu, Behayu, Bav, Yosun, 
that the pasuk says v'hoyu, right? V'hoyu advar mo ele, and it, we, that's from Shema, and Shema is in both Tefillin and Mezuzas. And because it says v'hoyu, it means that you have to write it in, it in its proper, you know, form, in its proper text. I.e., if it's Hebrew, it has to be written in Hebrew. If it's Aramaic, it has to be written in Aramaic. And therefore, the Bryce, which says that the Hebrew parts have to be written in Hebrew, the Aramaic parts have to be written in Aramaic, it's Take talking about Tefillin and Mezuzas. My Tagum my tagum shiksavu mikra ika. But then the Gemara says, one second. But how could the Brisa be talking about um, Tzvillin and Mezuzis? Because sure, while, while the Brisa says that if you have something that needs to be written in Hebrew, you have to write it in Hebrew, you can't write it in Aramaic. But it also says that something that's written in Aramaic can't be written in Hebrew. Where in um, Tzvillin and Mezuzis is there anything that's supposed to be written in Aramaic? Bishlam Torah, Ika, Yigar Saidusa. I understand in, in the Sefer Torah, for example, by when, 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 uh, Lovun catches up to Yaakov, so there's the Torah itself, right? Sigar Saidusa, which is Aramaic, so we're saying that that has to be written in Aramaic. But Elohocha, my Targumiko, where is there Aramaic in, in, in Tefillin and Mezuzis? So Ella, Lokasha, Kampe Megillah, Kan Bisfarim. No, so rather, uh, you can answer by saying that the Mishnah, which says that it can be written in any language, is talking about Sefer Torah, whereas the Brisa, that's saying that it has to, you know, the, it has to be written, the Hebrew has to be written in Hebrew, the Aramaic has to be written in Aramaic. That's talking about Megillah, the Megillah scroll. Megillah, my timer, Tehsiv ba Kichsovim Chilshonim. So, by the Megillah, it says that it has to be written in their writing and in their language. Kilo, everything as it's written, no changes. My Targum, Shechsovim Mikrika. One second. What, what, where, where in the Torah is there something written in Aramaic? That we're saying has to remain Aramaic. I'm sorry, where in the Megillah is there anything that, um, that, right, that's written in Aramaic that we're saying has to remain Aramaic? So, Mervpape, Vinishka, Vinishma, Piskam Amelech. That when the, it says in the Megillah that the Pisgam, that the sort of decree of the king was heard, so Pisgam is Aramaic. That all the women will give honor to their husbands, so Yikar is Aramaic. So therefore, yes, there are parts of the Megillah that are written in Aramaic. What the Bryce is saying that when it comes to a Megillah, so then um, the Hebrew parts need to be written in Hebrew, and the Aramaic parts need to be written in Aramaic. Ravashi Omar says Ravashi. So Ravashi gives a different explanation to this machlokas between the Mishnah and the Bryce. Ravashi Omar kitanya hi bishar svarim. Oh, so it says Ravashi that the Bryce that says. That um, you talk a need to to write um, the 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 you know the the Hebrew parts in Hebrew and the Aramaic parts in Aramaic. So that brisa is talking about Nevim and Ksuvim, other other Sfarim. So the Mishnah says that Sifrei Torah you can write in any language, but Nevim and Ksuvim, the brisa is saying that Nevim and Ksuvim need to dafka be written in their proper language, Hebrew and Hebrew, Aramaic and Aramaic. Rabbi Yehuda, and it's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda the Tanya, as we talk and learn in the Bible, it's filling them zuzis, and ichtovin ela ashuris. So, tefillin and mezuzis, tefillin and mezuzis um, need to be written in Lashon Kodesh, in Hebrew. Okay? Rabbi Senu, itiru yuvonis. And the rabbis, which of course is the opinion of Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, allows it to be written in um, Greek. Vaksi vahayu. How could it be that that um, how could it be that right, that you can write tefillin and mezuzis in Greek? It says it says vahayu. Uh, it says right that you have to be in the proper language. So ele emas svarim nichtavim b'cholashin. Or rather, what I'll say is. That Sifrei Torah could be written in any language. Rabbi Seinu Hitiru Yivonis, whereas Rabbi Shimon Gamliel permits it to be written in Greek. Hitiru Michal the Tanakama also. But what do you mean that Rabbi Shimon Gamliel permits it to be written in Greek? Does that imply that the Tanakama says that it's not allowed to be written in Greek? But um, you know, the Tanakama says it can be written in any language. So the aim of Rabbi Seinu Lo Hitiru Sheikos Elo Yivonis. Okay, fine. So, so. When it comes to Sifrei Torah, the rabbis say that you can write Sifrei Torah in any language, whereas Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says, no, you can only write Sifrei Torah in Greek. Meaning, 
you could you, you can only write the Sefer Torah either in Lush and Kodesh, or the only exception is Greek. Vitania, and we talk a little in the Bryce, Amr Yehuda says of Yehuda Afkishetir, Rabbi Seinu Yuvanis, that even when the rabbis, even when Rabbi Shimon Gamliel permitted to write this the, the Sefer Torah in Greek, Leitiru Ela, the Sefer Torah, that's only allowed by the Sefer Torah, but not by, um, um, you know, Sfarim Achirim, not by uh, Novi and Nevim and Ksuvim. Those have to be written um, in, 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 you know, the Hebrew parts in Hebrew, the Aramaic parts in Aramaic, and therefore we could say that the Brisa is talking about Nevim and Ksuvim, according to Rabbi opinion, the Rabbi Huda would say that only by Sefer Torah can it be written in a different language, and that different language would be um, Greek because of Mishumaisa the Tamei Amelech, because of the story with Tam Tamei Amelech. Who could tell me what the story is with Tamei Amelech? The Tanya, as we talk a little in the Brisa, Maisa the Tamei Amelech. There was talk a story with Talmai the king. Shakin is Shivim, excuse me, Shivim Vishnaim Zikainim, that he gathered together 72 elders, Vechnisom Vishivim Vishnaim Botim, and he put them into 72 separate houses, right? Each house had its own elder. Vilogila Loim Amakinson, and he did not let them know how come he was assembling them. Vinichna said, So Kolechot Vechot Vomer Loim, and he went into each fellow, each, each elder, and he said to them, Kisvuli Teres Meshe Rabchem. Write down for me the Torah of Moshe, your teacher. I guess he wasn't so busy. He had enough time to, 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 to drive these rabbis crazy. So, anyways, he had enough time, I guess, to gather together 72 rabbis, put them in different rooms, enter to each one, and say, Write down uh, the Sefer Torah. Oh, into Greek. Nosan Akadosh Baruch Hu Belev Kolechod Veechod Eitzo, and the Eibushter inspired each and every individual rabbi who was assembled by this Nudnik Talmai, and Veskimu Kulan the Das Achas. And without, you know, the ability to consult with one another, each one was in his own house, but nonetheless, um, they all had the same divine inspiration, Vikosvulo, and they made the same amendments to the text of the Bible. Elokim bar bracious, instead of saying bracious bar Elokim, that you could theoretically translate as this God named bracious created Elokim, God, right? Rather, Elokim bar bracious, that God created first, uh, you know, Shemaim Varis, etc. Ese Adam B'Tzalim with Mus, instead of saying Naise Adam B'Tzalim Uked Musenu, it says E, right? They said, which could be implying that there's multiple gods, but rather E, said, I, God, will create a uh, man. Vaychal bayomashishi vayish bosa bayomashvi. Instead of saying vaychal bayomashvi, instead of saying that God finished creating on the seventh day, which could be understood to say that God was, you know, doing malacha on Shabbos, rather they changed it to that God finished doing malacha on, on Friday and then he rested on Shabbos. Zochun keva bira o, that he created a um, man with both, um, you know, male and female faces. Velo kosvu bira om. He didn't say that he created them, which could sound like multiple people. Hova erda ve'avla sham svasom. Again, by the um, by the migdol um, bavel, uh, when these nudniks decide they were going to make a tower and fight the Abishter. So it says ve'hova nerda unvala sham svasom, but they changed it to hova erda ve'avla sham svasom again, so that in, there's only it's clear that there's one God, not. Chas v'shalom, multiple. But it's haksara b'krovel that um, it says that you know when Sarah got in trouble for laughing when she heard about the news of Yitzchak. So instead of saying v'kirba, in which case you could say, well, uh, it also says that 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 Avram laughed. So what's the difference between why why did Sarah get in trouble? So it says b'krovel that Kilu she was laughing amongst her relatives. That's why she got in trouble. Kibaakam hargu shor v'tonim akru evus. Instead of saying, uh, you know, recognizing that Reuben and Shimon killed people, instead they said that uh, they killed uh, animals, which I guess he didn't mind, you know, Tom, I didn't mind as much. And it says that, you know, instead of saying by Moshe Rabbeinu that he took his children and put them on a donkey, instead it says he puts them on like a camel. I guess it's a little bit more chashuv, a little bit more uh, honorable. 
Instead of saying in the Pasuk that the Bnei Yisrael were in Egypt for 400 years, which is not correct, they were in, they were in, they were in Egypt for 210 years, rather the 400 years is, 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 is counted from when Yitzchak was uh, born, I believe. So, so, so it says, instead of saying that the amount of time that the Yidin were in Egypt was 400 years, rather the amount of time the Yidin were in Egypt, Uvishayaratos, as well as other sojourns in other places, um, was 400 years, not just in Egypt. So, um, it says also by, well, not also, but it says by Har Sinai, um, it says that he sent the, the, like, um, the, um, the, the honorable people, the special people of Bnei Israel. Okay. So it's consistent both, right, in both, in both verses. Okay. Well, that's what the Bnei Israel shall have yodo and he didn't, um, 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 you know, uh, what's it called? The uh, exact vengeance from these honorable people. Okay. Lochemed echor meem nosasi. So instead of saying that Moshe Rabbeinu was saying to the Yidin, that he didn't even take one donkey, which could imply that maybe he didn't take one donkey, but he took other things. So he says, no, lochemed echod meim nasasi. I didn't, I didn't take any, any, anything, any desirable thing from anybody. Ashecholak Hashem lokecha osam lohoyer lecholo amim. So instead of saying that like God creates like, um, you know, the sun and the moon and stuff for all the other nations, which could be understood in like a, in a Vodazara kind of way, but it says, no, to Davka bring light, and that's it. Okay, and it says that you might go and do a Vodazara that uh, I didn't command you to serve them. Okay, also they all decided that instead of writing our Neves, right, the, a rabbit from the right in the Torah, um, they changes they changed rabbit to be a short legged creature. Um, because Tamai's wife's name was Taka Arnevis. That if it, he would find the word Arnevis in the Torah, so then he would be like, Why are they writing my wife's name? They might they, he might think that like, you know, they're they're being annoying. And but that's not true. It's talking about a rabbit. So they, they just swapped um, our neves, which means rabbit, for um, Tziris Araglaim, uh, a, a creature with short uh, legs. All right, sounds very nice. So therefore, because of the miracle that happened around this situation when um, um, the, the the Sefer Torah was translated translated into Greek, so the Sefer, the one exception um, is, is that by a Sefer Torah can be translated into Greek. Otherwise, it has to be written in Lashon Kodesh. So of course, our Mishnah had said that Reb Shimon ben Gamliel's opinion is that the only language that a Sefer Torah is allowed to be translated into is Greek. So in the name of Reb Yochanan, that the Lachi is Take like Reb Shimon ben Gamliel. So Reb Yochanan, my time to Reb Shimon ben Gamliel. So Reb Yochanan, how come Reb Shimon ben Gamliel says that a Sefer Torah is allowed to be translated into Greek? It's because the Pasuk says that the Abishter will have beauty for Yafes and he will dwell in the tents of shame. That the words of, of, of Yafes will be in the tents of shame and Yavon, Greece, is from um, Noah's son Yafes. Well, if it's just that we're talking about the... Um, the, um, the um, 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 children of, of Yefes, well, Gomer and Magog are also the, uh, children of Yefes, so how come specifically Greek? So rather, says, it's because when the Pasuk says, it means Yafuso Shal Yefes, that the beauty of Yefes will be in the tent of, of, uh, shame. I.e. in the in, in the Bate and 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 the beauty of of of, of Yefes is uh, Greek. That apparently Greek is a beautiful language, and that is why um, a Sefer Torah is allowed to be written in Greek. Okay, friends, <laughs> moving on to a new Mishnah. Friends, 
I believe that we've um, sort of interacted with these concepts in the past, that there are two ways for a Kohen Gadol to become a Kohen Gadol. One is that he gets anointed with special anointing oil, which uh, I believe Yoshio hid away um, in the first temple. And the other way is that he puts on the big dekuna, puts on the, on the, um, you know, he puts on the garments of the Kohen Gadol. Now he becomes a Kohen Gadol. So is there any difference between a Kohen Gadol became a Kohen Gadol because he got anointed with the special oil versus a Kohen Gadol became a Kohen Gadol because uh, he put on the eight garments in that way? So apparently there is one difference, which is parabo al mitzvis. That if a Kohen Gadol um, accidentally assumes that something which has a chiyuv kars associated with it is mutter. For example, let's say, uh, you know, he assumes that there's something he's allowed to do on Shabbos. And then it turns out that he's taka not allowed to do that thing. So then he, he brings a special korban, which is a par abo al kuala mitzvah. It's a par koin mashiach. It's a special cow offering that, um, uh, a, a, that is offered by the koin gadol in situations like this. So that will only be offered by a koin gadol, became a koin gadol with, by being anointed with a special oil, as opposed to a koin gadol who, uh, uh, you know, uh, got his role by putting on the big day kihuna. Of course, in the second temple, there were only Kohen Gadol's who got, who, who, who became Kohen Gadol's through putting on the eight garments. Now we've also learned about a Kohen Sha'avar. What's a Kohen Sha'avar? So for example, um, let's say the, uh, um, um, Kohen Gadol saw Kerry on Yom Kippur and then he was, uh, Tommy. So, so sort of the deputy then, becomes the Kohen Gadol, and he does the Avoda. Now, of course, we learned in Masech Yoma that that never actually happened, that the Kohen Gadol would become Tomei because he saw Kari on Yom Kippur. However, in, you know, in the, in the theoretical, um, I guess, event that that would happen, so the, 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 the sort of deputy Kohen Gadol would become Kohen Gadol for the day. Now, the thing is that once he puts on the eight garments and he does the Avoda in the eight garments, so he's actually a real Kohen Gadol. In which case, you kind of have two Kohen Gadols. But now, when the original Kohen Gadol is no longer Tomei, so he gets back his position, and he's the Kohen Gadol. But nonetheless, the other fellow, um, who was Kohen Gadol at the time, you know, for Yom Kippur, so he's still technically a Kohen Gadol. So we say that the only difference is, is um, the Pario Makipur, that the original Kohen Gadol, you know, the following year, would be the one to do the Avod on Yom Kippur, Vasir Seifa, as well as the daily Minchas Chavitin offering, that would be offered by the coin Gadol once he is back in his position, the original one, and the um, um, and the the the, the coin Sha'avar would not um, offer the daily minchas chavitin. Holding Pariyom Kippur Vasir Sa'efa Zev Zeshavan. So going back to the two types of coin Gadols, the one who becomes coin Gadol because he was anointed with the special oil, and the coin Gadol becomes coin Gadol with by putting on the garments. So we said that the only difference is. Paraba al kol mitzvah, a special chatas cow when he makes a mistake with something that there's a chiyuv of course associated with it. So, but with regard to uh, doing the melacha on, on, on yom, the, the, doing the melacha, do, doing the avod on yom kippur and the daily minchas chavitin offering, both types of coin gadol's, whether it's mubav gadol whether it's shemen amishcha, both would um, do the service on yom kippur and the daily minchas chavitin. So now says the uh, <coughs> Gemar, Masnis and Delok Rameir, that our Mishnah is talking not like Rameir. How come? The Rameir, because if it was Rameir, Hatanim Ruba Begadim, maybe Parabal Kol Mitzvos. Ha ha, the Rameir. We talk of a Bryce that says that according to Rameir, a uh, Kohen Gadol became Kohen Gadol by putting on the um, eight garments and doing the Avodah. So he talks, if he, if he makes a mistake regarding a, you know, something that has a Chiyu of Karis involved, associated with it, according to Rameir, um, Ruba Begadim would also bring this special Kohen Gadol Chatos. The Chacham of Enu Mevi, whereas the Chacham say that he would not bring this um, Par Kohen Moshiach, the special Chatos. My time to Rav Meir, Hakam Rav Meir says that Amshuach um, Ruba uh, Begadim would also bring this uh, Chatos. The Tani, because we learned about some Moshiach, that in the context of this uh, special Chatos, it says Moshiach. So in the Elam Moshuach B'Shem and Mishcha. So all I know is that a um, Kohen Gadol became Kohen Gadol with the Shem and Mishcha with the anointing oil. So he brings this special korban. How do I know that a Kohen Gadol who became Kohen Gadol by putting on 
the extra garments, the, the, the eight garments of the Kohen Gadol, how do I know that he also brings a, um, uh, you know, Par Kohen Moshiach? Tam Lomer Ha Moshiach. It says, the Moshiach, the extra hay, comes to include, um, so, so it comes to include even a Muruba Begadim according to Reb Meir. So now, Fekhti Gemar, the Mayu Kimra, the Lokra Meir, for one second. So we're saying that this Mishnah then is not Reb Meir, because our Mishnah says that a Muruba Begadim does not bring the Parkway Mashiach. And Reb Meir seems to say that he does. But Ema Seifaf, what about the second part of the Mishnah? Ema Koin Mashamish, the Koin Shavar, that there's no difference between an active coin gadol versus the coin gadol who was a coin gadol for a day but is no longer coin gadol. El pario makipurim basir seifa. The only difference is that the original coin gadol would would, would 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 do the service in the temple on Yom Kippur, and the daily minchas chavitin offering halachol devrein zev zeshavin. But regarding everything else, they are um, equal. They are all equal. Asan the Reb Meir, and that taka sounds like. Reb Meir, the Tana is we talk and learn in a brayse. If the if 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 a psul happened to the kohen gadol on Yom Kippur, uminu kohen acher tachtav, and they designated a different kohen gadol in his place, since the original is unable to do the avoda. So rishon chosel avoda. So sheni komis faskuna gadola all of the Reb Meir. So when the original kohen gadol is able to come back into his role, so he gets back his role. However, the the kohen gadol who kind of took over for him while you know while he was tamei. He's still a coin gadol. He doesn't, you know, become his, his coin gadolness is not taken away from him. So he's taka still a coin gadol. We said the difference is that the original one would be the one to do the service in Yom Kippur and to do the daily minchas chavitim. But other than that, you know, the 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 one who took over for for during that period is still a coin gadol. Rabbi Yossi Omer Rishon Chazal Avodas Sheni Enoroi Lo the coin gadol Lo the coin hedget. So whereas Rabbi Yossi's opinion is that. The, when, when the original coin gold was able to come back, he's reinstated. And the one who took over briefly, so he's now kind of like stuck in between, right? He can't be a coin hedget. And he can't be a coin gold. Let's go weiter for a minute. From Rabbi Yossi, says Rabbi Yossi, Maisib Rabbi Yossi ben Ulam Tzipori. Says Rabbi Yossi, that there was talk a, a story with Rabbi Yossi ben Ulam from Tzipori. Sheirbo psul bekoin gold o minu tachtov. That there was a psul that happened, right? The 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 uh, the the coin gadol got uh, disqualified to be able to do the uh, avodah on Yom Kippur. So they designated um, Reb Yosef ben Elam from, from ben Ulam from Tzipori to take his place. Uva Ma'isef Nechachomim ve'Amru, and then the rabbi said Rishon Chosel Avodasu that the original coin gadol, when he's able to come back, he comes back. Sheni in Uroi lo the coin gadol lo the coin edgin, and now Yosef ben Ulam. Who took over for him in the interim was is now kind of stuck. He can't be a coin gadol and he can't be a coin hedger. Coin gadol mishum eva. He can't act in any way as the coin gadol because we don't want to create hostility between the the original coin gadol and him. So therefore, he's got to stay away from any coin gadol, you know, activities. Coin hedger mishum malim b'kodeshulam ridin. But at the same time, he can't also go back to just being a regular coin. After he was the coin gadol during that period, because we go up in holiness, we don't go down in holiness, and therefore this right, Yosef bin Ulam, who became who was the coin gadol briefly, is kind of stuck. He can't be the coin gadol anymore because we don't want to create uncom- you know uncomfortableness, uncomfortable interactions between the original coin gadol and 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 this interim coin gadol. You know, once the original comes back, the the interim one kind of can't be coin gadol anymore. Right, so, so, and, and at the same time, he can't just be a regular coin because once he's been a coin gadol, he can't just go back down. He can't, like, you know, get a downgrade to being just a regular coin. So, Reisha Rabbanu Vesefer Reb Meir. So, what are we saying? That the first part is the rabbis and not Reb Meir, right? Because the first part says that a Muba Bugadim does not bring a, um, 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 Par Koin Mashiach. And yet, Reb Meir would say that he would. So if we're saying that the Reisha is not Reb Meir, it's the Chachamim, and yet we're saying that the Seifa, the second part, which says that a Meshuach Shavar, you know, he's still, he's still, um, he, uh, right, Koin Shavar kind of still is a Koin Gadol, he just doesn't do the Avod on Yom Kippur or the Minchas Chavitin. But uh, so Amr of Chizda, in Reisha Rabban of the Seifa of Meir, so, so, says of Chizda, that's exactly it. The first part of the Mishnah is the Rabbi's opinion, the second part of the Mishnah is Reb Meir's opinion. Rav Yosef Omar, Rebbe Ibn Yosef Le'alibu de Tanoi. Says of Yosef, actually, 
It's not that the first part of the Mishnah is the rabbis and the second part of the Mishnah is Rav Meir. The entire Mishnah is Rebbe. It's Rebbe's opinion. And Rebbe's opinion follow, is, is in line with the rabbis in the, right, the, meaning the, the ratio of the Mishnah, in the ratio of the Mishnah, Rebbe's opinion is in line with the rabbis. And in the Sefer of the Mishnah, Rebbe's opinion is in line with, uh, Reb Meir. But, um, it's all the opinion of Rebbe. That is Reb Yosef's opinion. <coughs> and now we get to the third Mishnah of the day. Uh, There's no difference between a Bama Gedola and a Bama Gedola. Who can tell me what these things are? So a Bama Gedola is basically the, um, the, um, uh, uh, Mizbeach in the, in the Mishkan. Whereas a Bama Gedola is just an altar that you make in your backyard, right? There were actually times in Jewish history where you were allowed to just construct an altar in your backyard and offer an animal for God in your backyard on that altar. However, once, um, yeah, however, nowadays we don't do that anymore. And also, during the time that there was the Mishkan in Shiloh, you weren't allowed to make private offerings. There were, at certain points you were allowed, at certain points you weren't allowed. So during a point where you were allowed to make a private altar and offer your own offerings on your own private altar, so we're saying that, Ein bin bama gedola, ktana, so during those periods, there was no difference between the altar in the Mishkan versus the altar in your backyard. El The only difference is the carbon Pesach. We're going to have to explain exactly what that means. Zea um, this is the rule. Kol shehu nidar v'nidav kari bebama. Kol she'enu lo nidar v'lo nidav enu kari bebama. Okay, now it says the Mishnah. So, in your own private altar, you can basically offer um, uh, voluntary offerings. So, if you say, look, I'm going to bring a carbon Ola. Right, so I'm going to bring a carbon Ola. You, could, you can offer that in, um, in, 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 in your backyard. However, Animals that are not that, I don't know, for example, Korban Pesach, I guess, but also Korban Talmud and Musafin, you know, all those kinds of things. So those would have to be, right, so those cannot be offered on a, on a private altar. So now it says the Gemara, Pesach and Vesulo. One second. So the ratio of the Mishnah had said, The only difference between the, 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 the Bama, the, the, the Mizbeach and the Mishkan, and your altar in your backyard, the only difference is the Korban Pesach. But what, what does it mean, the only difference is the Korban Pesach? We then said that only the only things that go on your private altar are your donations, right? You say, I'm going to bring a Korban, so you can do that, you can put that on your private altar. Other than that, everything else would have to be, right, on the Bama Gedola. So the Korban Musafin, right, and the um, Korban Talmud, Things like that. That would be in the Bama Gedola, so right in in, in the uh, in the Mizbeach and the Mishkan. So why are you saying it's only Pesachim? It's other things as well. So Ema Kein Pesachim. I'll say that no things similar to Korban Pesach. So yes, in your backyard you can only offer you know voluntary korbanos. You, know, you say you can bring a korban, you can offer that in your backyard. However, um, okay, so that, that's that. And the Mizbeach in the, the Beis Hamikdash, so that has. Uh, korbanos like Pesachim. What does it mean like Pesachim? Well, what's the Korban Pesach? Korban Pesach is a public um, 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 uh, sacrifice that has a specific time associated with it. It has to be offered on the 14th of Nisan. So also other Korbanos that have specific times associated with them, like Korban Musafs that you bring on certain days and uh, you know Korban Tamid that has to be brought in the morning and the afternoon. So those things can be offered on um, um, a, a, the, on the altar in the, in the Mishkan. However, things that don't have a specific time, for example, a parilim davrish al tzibur, right? If the Sanhedrin said that, you know, the Yidin are allowed to do, like, let's say, something on Shabbos, and then it turns out that they're not allowed to, so you bring a parilim davrish al tzibur, it's a special cow that you bring to represent, it's like a, almost like a korban chatas for the entire community, so it doesn't have a specific time associated with it. So that, you actually would not offer on a, um, altar in the temple, you wouldn't offer it uh, anywhere, right, in the altar in the Mishkan, fine. So Pesach and Vesulo, so what, only Pesach, Korban Pesach can be offered on the, on the, um, uh, Bama, in, on, on, on the, on the, on the altar in Jerusalem, so, uh, or, or in the Mishkan, so, um, Ema Ke'em Pesach, I'll say, like Korban Pesach, right, other Korbanas that, um, are public and have a set time, um, Money, Rib Shimini, that is the opinion of Rib Shimon. The Tanya is within the advice of Rib Shimon Omer says Rib Shimon, Af Tzibor Loikrivu El Psochim Bechovos Shekavu Elohim Zman. 
So even on the um, on, on the altar in the Mishkan, they would only offer korbanos, um, you know, like korban Pesach and other obligations that have specific times. However, um, um, uh, obligatory korbanos that didn't have specific times. So you know when when <coughs> they <laughs> so during these times when um, there was like the the altar in the Mishkan and people also had you know backyard altars. So something like a parlem davar shulzibor was not offered anywhere during those times. Um, all right. Well, what do you want me to tell you, friends? That was the test of Masechta Megillah. We had three Mishnayos on the test. The first one was comparing um, uh, the the the, um, the um, um, Sifrei Torah and Tefillin and Mezuzis in terms of the the languages that you can write them. Right? Sifrei Torah has to, Sifrei Torah could be written in any language, whereas um, Tefillin and Mezuzis has to be written in Lashon Kodesh. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says that even Sifrei Torah have to be written in Lashon Kodesh. The only exception being that it can be written in Greek. The Gemara had said, how come Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says it can be written in, in Greek? It's because we're saying that right, Yafta Lokum Liyafes Yafuso Shel Yafes Vishkum Baal Shem that the beauty of Yafes will be in the Bate Medrash of Shem, i.e. what's the beauty of Yafes that is Greek, which apparently is a beautiful um language all right then we saw taka a brisa which says that actually um, um things that need to be written in hebrew need to be written in hebrew and uh, they can't be written in aramaic or certainly not greek and things that need to be written in aramaic have to be written in uh, aramaic so we said what so 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 what's the deal with that so we say that so we say that that is taka so so we give two answers right one is to say that that's talking about the megillah that the Megillah has to dafka be written the Hebrew parts in Hebrew and the Aramaic parts in Aramaic, such as by Pisgah Mamelech and 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 Yitnu Yikar Levalein. So those are Aramaic parts that have to be written in Aramaic, and the Hebrew parts have to be written in Aram, in, in Hebrew. Ravashi says you could talk and say that um, this Brisa is talking about um, Nevim and Ksuvim, and says that, right, and that's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Who says that Nevi'im and Ksuvim have to be written in their proper language? You cannot write it in um, Greek. Okay, we saw the kind of famous story about Talmai Amelech that he took seventy-two elders and put them in different uh, rooms and said, "Write down the sefer." He translated the sefer Torah into Greek, and there were things that they had to amend. And all seventy-two um, um, elders made the same amendments to the uh, Torah. And relate, you know, reflecting on this story, that is why. Um, you are allowed to write the Sefer Torah according to Shimon Gamliel. That is the reason why you're allowed to translate the Sefer Torah into Greek, but no other languages. Um, okay, fine. Um, we said comparing different kinds of coin goggles, right? That the the difference between um, a coin goggle who became a coin goggle by with, by putting on anointing oils versus putting on the eight garments. We said that the only difference is. That um, a coin gadol who became coin gadol by putting on the eight garments alone, so he would not bring a um, uh, par coin mashiach. If he makes a mistake and does an avera that is a chiyuv of karis, he would not offer the um, special coin gadol uh, offering. So, um, and that's the opinion of the rabbis. If Mary actually says that he would offer the special coin gadol offering, and then we said that the only difference between a um, coin gadol and the coin gadol who had to take over him temporarily is that the <laughs> original coin gadol would do the avodan yom kippur as well as the daily minchas chavitin, whereas the one who kind of temporarily took over temporarily took over his position, and um, uh, um, you know he he's still coin gadol, but he would not do the avodan yom kippur or the uh, minchas chavitin, and um, and we said that according to Biosi, actually the coin gadol who was temporarily coin gadol. He has to completely step down since um, we don't want, you know, on the one hand, we don't want to create any sort of friction between him and the original coin gadol, and he can't become a regular coin anymore because Malim Bakodesh Vein Moridin. We then saw a Mishnah that compares Bama Gadolas and Bama Katanas. Bama Gadola being the um, Mizbeach in, in the Beis Amikdash or in the Mishkan, really. 
and bamakatanas, which are altars that you can construct in your backyard. We said that on a uh, bamakatana, on an altar that you construct in your backyard, you can only offer voluntary korbanos. Korbanos that you say, I know, I'm going to offer a korban ola or something. So you put that on your own private altar. Um, however, we, we said that um, public <laughs> um, uh, korbanos like korban pesach, the korban tomid, the mus- musaf and things like that, those would go on the um, mizbeach in uh, in the Mishkan, um, and we said this is the opinion of Rib Shimon, who says that um, communal offerings that don't have a specific set time, for example, par and davar shaltzibor, so that would not be offered either on the private uh, altars or on the altar in and the Mishkan friends. That was the test of Masech Megillah. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.